Let's go! Let's go! YouTube! YouTube, we live, baby! We live! What's up, everyone? Andy Kruger here, professional dog trainer. Today's topic. Does neutering calm down your dog? Does neutering calm down your dog? No! 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 Neutering does not calm your dog down. Neutering does not make your dog less aggressive whatever that means. No, no, no. Okay, next question. Just kidding. Guys, I don't even know where to start with this one. This has been in the, the pet dog world for quite some time now. This is what a ton of vets will actually tell you. This is what a million people will tell you, but that doesn't mean it's true. Now, before I really get into it, I am not against neutering. I am not against it. I'm definitely not against spaying. I'm definitely not against neutering, but let's just be real. Let's be real. If you have to castrate your dog in an effort to get them to cooperate with you better, I don't know if you should own that dog. I don't think it's the right dog for you. I don't think you're doing things correctly with the dog since day one. I think that you have facilitated this temperament to become what it is. And now instead of spending a lot of time and hard work getting a basic understanding for basic dog training, we're going to just pay a couple hundred dollars and sever their genitals. I don't like that. I don't like that. I'm not against spaying and neutering. The harsh reality is that 99% of people that own dogs are irresponsible dog owners. I'm sorry. That is just the reality. I made that percentage up. The point was to say it's a lot. A lot are irresponsible. A lot of people will either deliberately breed their dog when they should never ever in a million years do that. Some people will inadvertently breed their dog. Dog runs out of the yard, runs over to the neighbor's house, poof, puppies. There's already way, way too many dogs, both in the U.S. and definitely across the world. We don't need more. We don't need more. Leave that up to the real pros. So certainly in that situation, there's some merit to it. If a rescue, if an adoption uh, agency, they spay and neuter all their dogs before they adopt them out. I don't really have a problem with that. Again, nothing to do with behavior just for overall let's not make more mutt dogs to disperse around the, the country and the world yeah i'm all for it there once your dog gets to a certain age there are medical complications such as cancer that can occur in male and female dogs. So in the adult years, you could argue the dog is fully developed. They're 
fully mature, they're halfway or more than halfway through their life. Now, to try and be as cautious and preventative as possible, we choose to spay and neuter. Absolutely no problem with that. You could have a dog that's one or two years old and you say, we're going to spay and neuter because we plan on doing it eventually just for overall health so we can avoid any possible cancer or anything like that. Of course, the dog can still get different kinds, but you can do that. If you have some kind of plan or some kind of reasoning as to why you're doing it, I'm all for that. But when you're frustrated with a dog, when a dog is just running your life and you have no idea what you're doing, to spay or neuter that dog in an attempt to change their personality, I think you've been grossly misled. And now you're saying, well, Andy, you're trying to say that the vet's wrong when they said it'll calm them down? Yeah! Yeah, I am! Your vet's wrong! When did this, that a vet can never be wrong? Or are they infallible? Like, yeah, the vet's wrong! Andy, you're trying to tell me the food that the vet prescribed is bad for the dog? Yeah! Yeah, I am! I don't agree with most vets on most things. I love my vet. I do all my, my vaccinations. I'm not anti. I love my vet. But the reality is a lot of them, in my opinion, there's a basic level of training that they have, which is great for different medical things that the dog needs. But a vet telling you what's going to help your dog's behavior, they're not trained for that. Anyone that says, oh, neutering will calm the dog down, the only proof that they have are stories. That doesn't hold up. It doesn't work like that. Oh, yeah, no, my dog was crazy. I neutered him, and then he was way calmer. Says who? Says the untrained eye that's biased? Says who? Where's the proof? Show me a bar graph. Show me a pie chart. Show me a study. Show me blood work. Show me something that's going to hold up in court. You can't just say, oh yeah, it totally does that. Vets are selling the spays and neuters. They're profiting from it. If I'm selling a pill and I advertise it as, man, this pill, it's going to make you a lot smarter. It's going to make you a lot more successful. It's a pretty big claim, Andy. Where's the proof? Talk to my client. He took it. Client walks in. Oh, yeah, I'm way smarter now. And that's it. If you believe everyone you talk to, then okay, but there's no proof. There's no actual proof except tales, except stories. And those stories are coming from an untrained eye in the first place. Now, what you're saying is, oh, well, Andy, when you stop testosterone from flowing through a dog's body every day throughout the day, that is no doubt going to lower their energy levels. Why do you have a male dog? You know, mother nature is the, the ultimate. When it comes, there's a reason why a male dog has testicles, and why testosterone flows throughout his body. There's a reason for it. There's thousands, and in some animals, millions of years of evolution where the animal has evolved to have this specific, these specific parts with this specific 
purpose. So now over the last few decades, we go, no, no, we're going to change that. It'll calm them down. I hate that. And I mostly hate it because I think it's a cop out. I think, oh, let's neuter him and calm him down. First, just don't have that dog. You're not ready for the dog. You've set the dog up for failure. You've unleashed the dog to off-leash free roam in your house all day. You've created all these problems. Your dog's annoying you. So now, instead of doing tons of hard, hard work and doing it the right way, you're going to take that, that easy way. And all the vet needs to say, oh, it'll calm them down. Sold. Sold. Take my money. Calm? Hell yeah. Take my money. No, I don't think so. No, I, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. It doesn't calm the dog down. And if you want a calmer dog, then the dog that you have isn't the right dog for you. If you go through three or four dogs and none of them are the way you want, maybe you shouldn't have a dog. Maybe you shouldn't. Again, I am not against it. I am not, not, not against it. I think there should be spaying and neutering 100%. But I want to be real about why we're actually doing it. I definitely don't think a dog should be spayed or neutered within the first few years of life. I think under a year, to me it's crazy, but I know a million dogs that have, and on the surface, they look just fine. But my personal opinion, I'm not saying everyone needs to adopt this philosophy right now. I'm not trying to offend anyone that has spayed or neutered. I'm not trying to do it. I'm just gonna tell you how I honestly feel about it. If you're trying to alter that dog's genetic makeup, if you're trying to alter the dog's biology in an attempt to get them to be calmer, how dare you do that? I hate that. That's terrible. That's terrible. I've heard with a female dog, oh yeah, we want to spay him right away because, oh, we don't want him to go into heat. Oh, like all that blood in my house and carpet? Ew, gross. Don't get a female dog. Don't get a female dog. It's not gross. Don't be a baby. It's not gross. Oh, the blood? Yucky. Female dog's not for you. Female dog's not for you then. That's what comes with a female dog. A female dog goes in heat. Again, if after a couple of years, when the dog is fully mature and developed, physically, mentally, I am not against doing it. But to go, oh, gross, we don't want blood in the heat. Ooh, yucky, my carpet's going to have blood all over the house. Ooh, gross. Your baby. And you shouldn't have a female dog then. Maybe you shouldn't have a dog in general. All the calming down stuff with the neutering, it, it's been, everything's been done backwards with the dog since the day they got them. Everything's been done backwards. Backwards. I ain't about it, people. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm sure some people are going to go, yeah, Andy, I agree. And then some people are going to go, oh my God, I hate this guy. This guy's a jerk. What an idiot. That's YouTube, right? I'm just telling you the truth. What do you think I'm lying? What do you think I'm lying? If your vet says you should neuter them, it'll calm them down. Get out of there. Get out. Now, some people are going to go, well, Andy, like, what about the dog park? What about daycare? I don't do that stuff. I'm not about the dog park. I'm not about the daycare. No disrespect to anyone that does it. A ton of my clients do it. People in my family do it. Nothing. 
I'm just giving you my opinion. I'm not about that dog park. I'm not about daycare. Well, it's the only time I live in an apartment. It's the only time my dog can run. I'm at work all day. And maybe you shouldn't have a dog. I don't do that stuff. Well, the place that boards them, they have to be spayed and neutered. I'm not boarding my dog there then. I'm a responsible dog owner. There's a 0% chance my dog is going to impregnate a female because he's not out of my sight and out of my control. So that's not going to happen. I make arrangements with responsible people for him. If I can't house him, I'm not about any of that. The modern day dog, all this stuff. So neutering doesn't calm them down. Get out of here with that stuff. Let's get into the questions. Everyone, Patreon dot com slash Andy Kruger. That's where you get all the real stuff. That's where you get all the unfiltered training footage. You can get a lot of a lot of good stuff on my YouTube, of course. Tons of information. But if you're really, really wanting to learn dog training and you want to pay your boy, patreon.com slash Andy Kruger. It costs nothing. 25 bucks to get in. Come on. You'll spend more on coffee in a week. Hey, oh, Andy, what's up? Let's get into the chat now. We rolling, baby. Over 50 people. Let's go. Cheers. Happy weekend, y'all. I hope you're training. It's about 90 degrees here. I almost melted a couple dogs this morning, but we training. Hey, Andy, one female of mine. is has bossy or perhaps has become more aggressive than before after being spayed. What would that be? What different do I need to do? So this person says their female became more bossy or aggressive after being spayed. Well, there's two answers to that. The first answer is I totally respect your perspective on that. And this goes back to the spaying and neutering. If a, if a vet or if your friend or family tells you neutering will calm the dog down, I'm not saying they're lying. I'm not saying they're trying to be deceitful. I believe that that's their actual opinion. So I'm not trying to say that they're liars or they're deceiving whatsoever. I'm just saying that they're wrong. So for this nice uh, person in the chat's question, my female became more aggressive or more bossy after being spayed. I respect and acknowledge that that's your opinion, but let's all make sure that we know that I could absolutely have a different opinion. If I saw that dog every minute of every day before the spay and every minute of every day after the spay, my opinion might be nothing's changed. She's been like that all along and you're off. She's been like that all along. I'm not saying that's, I don't know the dog, but that's possible. Know that that's possible. The untrained eye, the biased eye, we can't take that as gospel. You're altering the dog's biology. You're changing what mother nature has given to the dog. You're saying we know better than thousands of years of evolution. This person that was in a classroom for a couple years at a school. Why did that happen? If that actually happened, I don't have the foggiest idea. It could have nothing to do with the spay. It could be the dog's entire lifestyle. Everything you've done with the dog since day one, I might do it the complete opposite. So what do you need to do differently? You need to invest your time resources, your efforts into really understanding dog training and how to live with your dog and totally reboot your entire relationship with the dog. Start from square one. Pretend like it's a brand new dog. Never off leash free roaming in the house. Never doing whatever it wants most of the time. Invest in learning quality dog training and start from square one, my friend. Let's go, Rico! Hey, Andy, does neutering the dog minimize prey drive and working drive? Again, 
Does neutering the dog minimize prey drive and working drive? Mother Nature has designed my dog a specific way. And that's the way that the dog should be. So, hey, hey, if I cut off the leg, it'll get slower. Hey, if we give it, dude, you could do all kinds of stuff to a dog and see how it could affect a dog here and there. But the question for me, will it do that? I don't know what it'll do. I don't want to know what it'll want to do. Nature's already designed the dog to be at its most optimal. So I don't know. I don't want to know. People will tell you that, oh, neutering, yeah, they'll be less prey driven. Uh, working dog, you know, you want that testosterone, but come on, where's the proof? My 15 month old awesome Mally girl will have her second heat in a month or so. But the more I think about it, the less inclined neutering. Well, if it's a female, it'd be spay, but I know what you're saying. Guys, if I have a female dog, they're going through several heats, several, for years before I would even think about that. But if you have the right lifestyle with the dog, if you should have the dog and you're qualified and your environment's right, there's no need until the, the, the older years to try to preserve them as long as possible because cancer is real. It's one less cancer that they could get. I'm not saying I do that, but that's the argument. Yes, sir, we train, and there's Jordan. Jordan's one of my top patrons. He's an up-and-coming trainer. Let's go. Where are you? I'm in my house. You can take the bullets out of the gun, and you still have a gun. I like that. Andy, does neutering have the same slash similar effect to both male and female dogs? Like I said at the top, I'm not against it. I'm all for you doing it, but for the right reasons. We're here, Andy. Oh, yeah. Vets lie. My daughter's a vet. She always tells her customers what they need to hear in order to neuter or spay their dog. You said it, not me. I don't think, like, honestly, and that may be the case there. But for me, honestly, if a vet tells you, yes, it'll calm the dog down. It'll make them less aggressive. It'll make them less prey driven. It'll calm them down. It'll calm them down. I'm not calling them liars. I believe that they actually believe that. But what I'm saying is that belief is unfounded. And I don't want the stories. Oh, no, this per we did it a million times and a million out of a million out of one time. They were really calm. No. And I have a limitless pill, too. Ask all my buddies. They take it. They'll give rave reviews about it. My vet said... Don't like to operate on a healthy dog if I'm okay to deal with the heat periods. If you can't deal with a female dog going into heat, do not buy a female dog. It's really that simple. It's basic. It's simple. Control animal population. You nailed it, Anne. And we need to control the animal population. And that's why I'm definitely not against spaying or neutering. Definitely not against it. We need to control that animal population. And it, most people that own dogs are irresponsible with them, as unfortunate as that is. We're all way smarter watching your videos. Well, I appreciate that, Rico. That's nice. Hey, when it comes to dog training... I do know what I'm talking about. Other stuff, I don't know. But dog training, I usually don't proclaim something unless, unless I really know. When men stop producing testosterone, we start serious degradation. Degradation. Why would I do that to my puppy? Agreed, David. 
Quick question. Should I correct my seven month old puppy for jumping on people and introducing play with other dogs? And inducing play with other dogs while we're on a walk? Or is it just a puppy stage? I don't like the phrase puppy stage, so let's erase that. Um, I, I never, ever let any of my client or any of my personal dogs ever meet a dog on a walk. It's never happened. It never will happen. If someone's dog runs up to me unexpectedly, I'm going to get mad at them and yell at them. Um, so puppy or not, I never in a million years let my dog meet or touch or interact with another dog on a walk. So X that one. Should I correct my seven month old puppy for jumping on people? You don't need to correct if you have a leash on the dog because then it blocks the dog from doing that. The leash creates it. It's a physical impossibility if you're holding the leash correctly. So correct. No, use the leash, definitely. Let's go, thanks for speaking out on this subject. This is easy stuff, this is basic. LOL, you tell him, Andy, love your honesty. My three males are going to keep me alive longer with their energy. <laughs> oh yeah, Charlotte, they'll keep you on your toes, huh? Andy, is it true that you cannot spay or neuter a dog until they are full grown? Because if you do, it would stunt their growth. Yeah, it does all kinds of terrible stuff. You spay and neuter a dog when they're a little puppy, their bones don't grow correctly. Their heads are small. They don't have the hormones that they need. You're literally chopping the, the most important developmental hormones off. It stunts their growth mentally, physically, their bone development, their bone density, their muscle development. Oh, yeah. My vet was very supportive of our decision not to neuter our dog. Two of my neighbors neutered. Both dogs are still high drive and aggressive as ever. Yeah, it's BS. None of them trained their dog, not surprisingly. Bingo. And you got to think. Let's, let's think about... Let's think about paper, huh? Because money makes the world go round. Veterinary care is a business. You understand? What's important in business? Money. You have to make money. So everyone that walks through that vet's door, there's a possible two, three, four, five hundred dollars. If, I mean, I understand why a vet would be like, yeah, spay and neuter, yeah, spay and neuter, yeah. A annual checkup, annual checkup, yeah, I get it. And I get why vets don't want to piss people off. They'll never come back. If you tell people, oh, no, that's BS, they'll go to another vet. They'll give them their business. They'll spend their thousands and tens of thousands there. Vets want to make money, too. I'm not saying they're lying. They want to make money. I'm a dog trainer. Dog training's a business. My business needs to make money. I want to make money, too. Who's training? Let's go, Jimbo. Andy, help a brother out. I'll try. Training switch. She'll not let go of the toy until I let go first. Then she's good at letting go. How do I get her to let go while I'm still holding on? Jimbo, you really got to entice her with that second toy. Don't drop that toy, Jimbo. You're only reinforcing it. Jimbo, get a, get a lower value toy that you're tugging and then get a higher value toy. It'll make it easier for her to pop off and go to it. Hello again, Andy, the fellow pet lovers and fellow pet lovers. Thank your dog trainer. He makes bad dogs good and good dogs better. Well put, Joe. I had the most level-headed JRT before I got him neutered. Afterwards, he never settled, no matter how much exercise he got. Eh. Thank you for sharing. Sounds like a training issue. Why get a dog if you don't want to interact? Spot on, Andy. Don't thumbnail on this one. Thanks. Yeah, the thumbnail is my number one boy, Jasper. You know how we roll. You know he's not neutered. I'd get Jasper neutered. 
if the if it, he had some sort of a medical issue with his testicles for sure. But if not, why would I ever do that? When you'll upload a video about recall? I don't know. I haven't filmed one yet. Give me a give me a month. Hey Andy, my six month old German Shepherd Malinois mix is crate trained. Good start. I like that. She's doing great. We hear you on no off leash roaming. Yep. Curious what age, in your opinion, do you start trusting your dog to be able to be off leash roam? It's totally different with every dog and with every owner. Totally different. Could be six months, could be a year, could be a year and a half, could be two years. It just depends on your training and your lifestyle with the dog. But it could be anywhere from post-teething into adulthood. What makes Bart Bellin your favorite over some of the other greats? Bart Bellin's a longtime dog trainer, really well known in the dog world. Uh, Jordan, what makes him good? He's, he's very scientific. He has so much experience that's really good. Um, he, he's, he's just like a mad scientist with dog training. He's, he's tried everything. He's, you know, he's kind of just like this, this mastermind, like him and his wife. I know that they, they just spend hours and hours and hours just talking about their theories and their program. And he's very exact. He's very scientific. He's very emotionless. And I really like the way that his work translates to the dogs. That's the thing. You look at all the trainers like, yeah, they're good. They're good. They're good. I like the way his dogs perform. Lots of questions. Might be here a while, y'all. My older dog has health problems from lack of testosterone. He's now on testosterone replacement therapy. Oh, that vet's making the money on that one. After a few months, he looks five years younger. Yeah, there's a reason that thousands of years of evolution and Mother Nature said, hey, we need the testosterone. Guys, when, when guys get into like their like 40s and 50s and 60s, they do TRT. They do testosterone replacement therapy, not to get juiced up and to get their levels back to where they used to be, to a healthy male, because it makes you healthier. It makes you age slower. It get like it's supposed to be there. Training, oh yeah. When is it too hot to train? Pfft, right now, 90 degrees. I got a good 15 minutes and they toast. Hey, Andy, happy training. Virginia Patreon here. What's up, Ashley? Wanted to share the one-month update on Lincoln's healing progress. Lincoln is the German Shepherd. You guys see on my YouTube channel. Did a quick little board and train with him. We've been religiously practicing everything we learned. I never could imagine the results. We're just getting started, Ashley. This is nothing. I can bring him anywhere, food or no food, other dog, no longer matter. People don't even ask to pet him because they assume he's a service dog. Discipline, the training system, it works. Love to hear it. Good job, Ashley. But this is nothing. If you like this, you're really going to like what happens in six months. We've been taking Hades swimming on the weekends. What's a good guideline on how long to let him swim? Um... For me, I'll swim like 20 minutes maybe at the most. Yes, I agree. She has been bossy. Bossy is humanizing the dog. Bossy, I'm sorry. God love you. That doesn't work for me. I wouldn't trust a new vet these days. You're telling me. Can bite work encourage a dog? Bite more and become more aggressive? Can bite work encourage a dog bite more and be and make a dog become more aggressive? Yeah, for sure. 
Have you ever had a board and train go into heat? Has it caused issues? I have a board and train in heat right now. Not ideal. Not ideal. Owner's about 13 hours away, so there's no way to reschedule and send the dog home. Has it caused issues? No, it hasn't caused issues because luckily I have a training building like 50 feet behind my house and that's where she's staying away from the main kennel and all the male dogs in there. And uh, I train her on the back part of the property. So it hasn't caused an issue with the other dogs. Um, hasn't caused an issue with her training at all. It's not ideal. If I could have picked it, I definitely wouldn't have her here in heat, but we'll get, we're getting it done. As long as you manage the, yeah, if I just let her in the main kennel and intermingle with all the other dogs, that'd be a disaster. I spayed her just because the vet says they might get cancer. Yeah, but again, if you look at the statistics, that happens past the midway point of their life, typically. Look, it, it, I, I mean, the, the dog could get brain cancer. Could, should we take their freaking brain out? I mean, it's, I get it, but it's kind of like, well, they could get cancer. Like, well, they could get their tail slammed in a door. Let's dock that. Where does it end? I've been feeding my six-month-old Malinois wilderness puppy food. I'm thinking of switching them to Purina. No offense, I hate both. Hey, Andy, what do you think about resource guarding and a dog's behavior? Is it a genetic trait or is it possible to prevent it quick? Look, resource guarding, there's a reason that dogs and animals in general, predators, have survived, again, for thousands of years. If every dog just, oh, you want to come up and take my food? Okay, you're going to die. It's literally programmed into the dog. When you have a resource, you need to guard it because it's valuable to your vitality and your life. You can't let someone come over and take it. So if you're having a problem with resource guarding, you've set the dog up for failure. You've created it. It's in dogs. It's in dogs. Scrolling. The resource guarding, like it, you need to set up the situation better. You're, you might be screwing the dog. If you got a three-year-old dog, if I got a three-year-old dog and training is for sports, where would you start engagement and play? Depends what they already know. But, I mean, Jordan, I wouldn't treat that much different than, I mean, I'd start at square one, and depending on the dog, I could go as fast or slow as I need to. But hand feeding, tugging, just basic stuff. Andy, will you spay or neuter ring dog? Will spay or neuter... Andy, will spay or neutering my dog stunt their growth if it's done before they stop growing? 1,000% yes, it will. Terrible for a dog's growth and development. Terrible. And again, guys, if you're like, Oh man, I can't handle this dog. This dog's crazy. I've tried everything. I'm going to neuter him. You shouldn't even own that dog in the first place. What makes you qualified to have that dog? My girl, is, two years of research online doesn't count. My girl is a rescue dog and our rescue agreement requires us to spay or neuter in 12 months. What are they going to come knocking on your door? Are they going to, they going to track you down? They're going to find you. But Hey, if you signed the contract, you agreed to it. Could you recommend a good dog food for my six-month-old Malinois? I've been feeding them wilderness, but it's causing them to have diarrhea. Yeah, wilderness is terrible. I think the, the brand Akana is pretty good. Hi, Andy. Made some really good progress this week. Thanks. Glad to hear it, Stephanie. you got to keep that up now. It's a marathon. The American Veterinary Medical Association... I don't trust them as far as I can throw them. 
says potential health problems associated with spaying and neutering have also been identified, including an increased risk of uh, prostate cancer. <laughs> well, I just said I don't trust them. Hey, that could be true. Yeah, we again, the spaying and neutering, it's a very new concept, like a few like decades or so old. I mean, just having a house dog by unqualified, you know, dog owners, no offense, but I mean, I'm not qualified to build a car. Uh, it, it's a, it's a new thing. This is all new. Yeah. Spaying and neutering, you're altering a dog's biology. You're going against nature that could 100% cause problems. Our 20 month neutered male randomly pops off on dogs on leash or off. She's in a pack of dogs and getting picked 18 dogs in a vet. Yeah, that's all just training. So interesting to me. Your thoughts, that's just pure training. But it does state my point. You have a 20-month-old neutered male who is very reactive. So what did the neutering do for that? Nothing. But that's 100% training. It's 100% um, nurture, not nature. Guys, think about how unhappy you'd be without your emoji of peanuts. <laughs> if you wouldn't do it yourself, then don't do it to your dog. Good point, Kyle. Again, I am not against it in any way, but it, I wouldn't do it. I hate any time I take my dog to the pet hospital, they come with the spay and neuter campaign. Flyers, so annoying. Yeah. That's, that's terrible. That's disgusting. I would run away from them. I'd look at them like this. I'd look at them like this. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh my God. I have to go. LOL. Got only one male, got only one male and she requires at least four miles a day. Well, Ivar, if you know my stuff, I'm actually not four the heavily physical exercising the dog, but I'm sure they're capable of it physically. Vets will tell you what you want to hear. Nailed it, Joe. You nailed it. Vets will tell you what they what you want to hear because it's a business. And you know what? Being a dog trainer, dealing with a million clients from every walk of life, it, it's not easy telling people what they don't want to hear, especially when it's about their dog or their child. It's really not easy information to deliver. It's really not. It's way easier just to, yep, oh, he was great. Okay, yeah, I love dogs. That's way easier. Are sport dogs good personal protection dogs? They can be. Careful animal lovers will come with the gender identity ideology against our dogs. <laughs> Yowza. Hope not. Can I keep my dog on place to substitute crate time? Or is it not the same? Definitely. Place is a great alternative to the crate. Thanks for answering my question, Andy. You're the best. Thanks. You mentioned that neat popo is great for some dogs, but not the best for sport dogs. Agreed. Yes, I did. How to start protection slash defensive training at home. 10 month old German shepherd male. Now I got to pick on you a little bit. I got to pick on you. I appreciate the question. My biggest pet peeve in the world is when German shepherd owners misspell the word shepherd. It's just my pet peeve. Uh, start protection at home. The only way to start protection or defensive training at home is to work with a qualified dog trainer that does that. There's no way you could do it yourself. That's the reality of protection training. I can't protection train. I can't train my sport dogs by myself. I can't protection train a dog myself. That takes a village. I've seen that the dog food now is hitting the ground and not being absorbed. Huh? I'm not sure what you mean by that, man. Sorry. I have a Malinois. I had a family tell me to cut it off to calm them down. Yeah, they're misinformed. 
I feel neutering is for lazy people who don't want a dog to train. You said it, not me! I'd rather have a whole dog and train the behavior. If the dog doesn't work for you, don't own the dog. Pure and simple. Andy, did you see the movie Dog? If yes, what'd you think? F no! I don't watch that crap. I don't, guys, I don't watch anything with dogs. I don't watch anything. I don't watch YouTube videos with dogs. I don't watch Netflix things with dogs. I don't watch anything having to do with dogs. It's the last thing I want to see because it's going to disgust me. So hell no, I haven't watched that. How do I get my Frenchie to relax on the couch with me, LOL? <laughs> Tommy, you got jokes, my man. You got jokes. Hey, Andy, been watching your videos. They're all great. Thank you, Penny. Thanks for sharing. Just join the Patreon. Love it. We are rolling. Best kibble? Depends. Like I said, Akana's been good for me. I hear you. It's been 105 the last three weeks here. Training has been ever quick and slim. Yeah, Jordan, five-year plan, maybe 10-year plan. You need you a big old air conditioning training building. That's what you need. Hi, Andy. My boyfriend just told me to jump on your live video in order to fix my bad mood. It helps. Woo! Small man! Thank you, by the way, going for that awesome lab soon. Nice, love labs. Please post link on description line to your Patreon link, thanks. Joe, here's the problem. When it comes to stuff like that, I'm dumb. I cannot figure out for the life of me how to link my Patreon in the description. I can link my, sh my merch, I don't know how to do it, Joe. Someone help a brother out, for God's sake. Someone tell me how to link my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Andy Kruger. Just type it in for now, my man. If you really want it, you'll get there. Is it easier to lure and shape puppies than lure older dogs? Um, you could say that because the puppy is such a blank canvas, but it just depends on what's been done with the dog. But generally speaking, if I had to, I'd say yeah. Yeah, it'd probably be easier to lure a puppy than, than an old dog. But it just depends. I used to work at a boarding kennel, and I feel like every time we'd get an intact female, being around all the other dogs made them go into heat. It's possible. Definitely possible. But I'm not, again, like the big conglomerations of dogs you know you have like 20 30 50 dogs in one place i don't like that at all anyway what do you think of bob barker uh the price is right was pretty sweet back in the day hormone deficiencies in dogs when spay and neuter yeah of course you're cutting all of it off of course there's deficiencies i feed my year old rottweiler with Premel special 2616 dog food, but I plan to buy female working German Shepherd puppy. What food do you recommend for my new puppy? I don't know. I don't, I don't really recommend food a lot. It's very individual. It really just depends. Nothing from a big brand pet store, though. All that stuff won't be any good. How do you spell the dog food? A-C-A-N-A. -A -A. Yeah, there you go. If someone spays or neuters, they should do the same to themselves. <laughs> If that was the case, you know, the, the, the sales at the vet would certainly go down. Copy. However, got to say way better regards to his demeanor since we neutered him at home 11 months old. However, got to say way better regards my, his demeanor since we neutered him. He's a 110 pound cane corso pit mix. So again, and I totally, I appreciate you for being here, and I respect that that's your opinion, but we just have to consider that if my trained eye was to fully assess the dog in the situation before and do the same after, 
my opinion could be wildly different from yours. But I appreciate the input there. What do you think about Mal versus German Shepherd comparison? Which is better for sports slash protection about you? Look, a Malinois versus a German Shepherd, you know, what's your flavor? What's your flavor? My flavor is Malinois. It's like, hey, Andy, what's better, vanilla or chocolate ice cream? You know, you have a million people say chocolate. You have a million people say vanilla. You know, what's your flavor? They're both great dogs. They can both do great sport work. They can both do great protection work. What's your flavor? Will food guarding necessarily translate to toy guarding? It could. He loves his ball sometimes more than treats, but he will not drop it in front of my other dog to encourage play. He wants to protect his food, though. But he will drop it in front of my other dog. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's possible, but... You know, the food, the dog knows that he can consume it, and it's his vitality, his life source. So maybe not. I don't currently own a dog, but do enjoy your videos. That's what's up, Dale. Some of my favorite stuff on YouTube, like I love watching like build videos, like woodworking videos. I never plan on building it, but still fun to watch. So I hear you there. I appreciate it. Excuse me. Thanks, Rachel. Hit the like button. Get the algorithm going. Oh, yeah. By the way, 25K, we hit the 25K, let's go, 100K by the end of next year, we go 100K by the end of next year, period, make it happen people, I'm busting these videos out, I have a medical issue and needed one of my ovaries removed, if I have, if I have to have the other one out, I need hormone therapy, thinking about how much this affects our dogs. Well, first of all, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for, for coming to the chat and sharing that and adding that perspective. And yeah, it does, you know, that gives you a unique perspective over the average dog owner. Um, man, really something to think about. Thank you for bringing that to the table. I have a six-year-old Malinois a one-year-old Pressa, and two three-year-old Cane Corsos. All right, giddy up, baby. My two males are unneutered and never will be, but my Mal is spayed, but she got, um, I think we spelled that wrong, but yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Nothing wrong with that. How tall is Jasper in his weight? Jasper's a little guy. He's, I don't know, I, Honestly, I don't know how tall he is. I don't know how much he weighs. He probably weighs like 55. He's a little guy. My friend, it's been a while. I couldn't get to you live. Congrats. Great work. Thanks. Fabrice Bosnier. Have you been to a seminar a few months ago? What do you think? I like Fabrice. Fabrice is very good. Yeah, I like Fabrice a lot. Fabrice is very, very good. <clears throat> I'll never have a bad thing to say about Fabrice. Now, me and him, we may do things a little bit differently, but Fabrice, A plus trainer. A plus trainer, A plus breeder. You cannot go wrong at that seminar. That's the best money that you've spent. You're going to hate this question. At least you warned me. But how do I get a dog from being in a kennel to working with me and just forgetting everything else they knew before? Shiva, I don't think I understand this question. I don't hate it. I don't understand it. How long? Hold on. How do I, how do I get a dog from being in a kennel to working with me and just forgetting everything else they knew before? Okay, uh, you start from scratch, deliver all that dog's meals via your hand, practice luring, practice free shaping, pretend like it's a brand new puppy. I have a red German Shepherd. He's my best friend and very smart. 
That's cool, Rachel. I got to correct you, though, Rach. I got to correct you. S H E P H E R D. Shepherd. I'm sorry. It's just like my biggest pet peeve when people go S H E P A R D. Sorry, I hate it. No, I know it's an honest mistake, but P H E R D. Please, no pard. It's purred, no pard. But thanks, Rachel. Yes, Andy, you're absolutely correct. You need the dog to develop physically and hormonally. Unfortunately, I listened to my vet, neutered my GSD under a year old. Uh, it has my dog nervous and skittish. You know, vets, now you know, though. Now you know. So it's all good. 25K, let's go, baby. Let's go. Your energy is infectious. If I have a bad train day, I find a video of yours to watch. Thank you very much. Nice. Congrats. What do you think about taping five-month Malinois puppy's ears to help them stand? His ears are still down. You could. Yeah, you could tape them to help them stand. I've seen people do that, and it's worked. Yeah, yeah. You could definitely tape them. I have an Akita. Your videos have made him go from low drive to very high drive. It's amazing. Booyah. The magic of dog training. Thank you, Zach. 100K subscribers. We're getting that 100K next year. And we're getting it. And we're getting it the old-fashioned way. We're getting it the honest way. We're not doing it with stupid clickbait. We're not buying subscribers. We're not spending money promoting the channel. We're not doing all kinds of goofball stuff, trying to go on Goofball's channel to get more. We're doing it the old-fashioned way. We're putting out real training videos. We're putting out real Q&As, and we are slowly but surely growing this bad boy from the ground on up. Which Akana would you recommend for a six-month-old Malinois? Any, any other food's fine. Pick one, any one. Change it up. It's all good. Can I get a free He Bites t-shirt? Unfortunately, no, because I don't physically have any of the t-shirts besides the ones that I own, um, so they're all on teespring.com. So unfortunately, I can't do that. But you could buy one, and then, um, well, I don't have much after that. I mean, it's about 30 bucks. 30 bucks. Congrats. Thank you. What do you think about Jonathan Katz? Jonathan Katz is a, a guy, he's a PSA trainer, he's a dog trainer, he's always been super nice to me, he's actually come to my place a couple times, um, and I've helped him and one of his dogs prepare to compete in French Ring uh, on, on a few different occasions, so he's always been super cool to me, um, his dog did great when they were here, I think he, he went ahead and titled her to I think a ring one title shortly after that. Um, so he's always been cool with me. To be honest with you though, I can't speak about his training at all. Like I've never actually trained with him. I've never been to a seminar. I've never watched him interact and train with people. So I, I don't I don't really know like how he trains, what he does. I don't support it. I don't unsupport it. It's just I don't really know, but He's always been a super cool guy to me, and I know a lot of people, a lot of people really like him. Share it on Gab. Thank you. Andy, I am physically challenged in a wheelchair. Can I train my dog while having him on a lead? Because I'm afraid if I'm holding the leash and he runs, he's going to pull the leash straight out of my hand. Yeah, Sheba, that's, um, can you train a dog in a wheelchair? 100%, but yeah, that safety factor there of the dog just bolting. I mean, you need to be absolutely positively sure that that's not going to happen. If you are able to have a second person, this is what I do. Excuse me. I've trained many dogs for owners in wheelchairs over the years. And what I'll do is when I'm having the owner handle the dog, in the preliminary stages, I have a second leash on the dog and I'm behind them. So if an emergency happens, something crazy happens, I'm there with the leash. 
if I'm working with a family and they want their little kid handling the dog, I'm behind on a second leash. So ideally, that's the procedure for the first several months until you fully trust the dog. And the Patreon member here, what's up, Patreon? Any advice for holding positions? My male will go into a down when he's in a sit-stay after a while. Love your work. Keep hammering. Yeah, Alberto, you got to keep these sessions quick and fast-paced. You got to go. It's got to be sit. Boom, 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 boom. Release. Sit. Release reward. Sit. If your dog is in a sit, and they are drifting into a down, you never down your dog from a sit ever. Never down your dog from a sit ever. Sit is sit and down is down. Completely separate them and that'll lessen the chances of doing that. No worries, Rachel. I hear you. Who else would you recommend learning from besides you? Bark Bellin, Michael Ellis, Ivan. Yeah, I mean, those are the the big names that are out there, I guess. But yeah, sure. But, you know, those guys aren't getting me, like, really excited. Um, Jordan, who would I recommend learning from? Who would I recommend learning from? Let me think about that one, Jordan. Is there some names... There's some names I could definitely throw out that no one's ever heard of. Let me think about that, my friend. I'll holler at you. Congrats on 25K. Thank you. Thanks for your videos. Where'd you get your last puppy from? He's a nice dog. I'm sorry. Uh, my breeder specifically requested before I got my dog, that I do not give out his information. So unfortunately, I have to honor that, and I can't say. Andy, I should have said instead of kennel, I should have said shelter dog. Same thing, you have to start from square one, pretend like the dog's a new puppy, and I love Goldens. I just enjoy your positive energy and watching your amazing dogs. Thank you, Debbie. I appreciate you. Hey, I'm from Brazil. What's up, Brazil? Hey, guys, hit the like button. You got that right. Like this bad boy. Today's our second vet visit for blood work, our 11-month-old large pup. Any advice? What are you getting blood work for? Any advice? Eh, not really. What's What's it for? Andy, my one-year-old female male in has developed a nervousness on walks, on busy roads. She gets spooked by large... How can I build her confidence? Get Watch my video that I posted of uh, teaching healing with the German Shepherd Lincoln. Watch that video. That's exactly what you have to do. If your dog can't do that, don't move on. Guys, you have to remember this. Malinois are skittish. They're nervy. They are. That's in their genetics. Malinois are skittish. Malinois are nervy. Malis, Malinois bite a lot. Malinois are little tweakers. They're not a golden. Of course they're spooked. Of course they're sketchy. This is kind of the breed. It's kind of the dog. Not saying you can't change that, but... Malinois aren't a Rottweiler. They're not a lab. They're not a boxer. They're very little nervy dogs. That's just what they are. You got to watch that Lincoln video, though. That The video that I posted on Monday. That's exactly how you need to go about that. Andy Kruger, number one in my book. Smart lady. Thanks, Rachel. How do I prevent my dog from staring down dogs? How do I prevent my dog from staring down dogs we pass on walks? He's not aggressive. Thanks for the help. Well, Vanessa, what your dog's telling you is that a strange dog on the street that he doesn't know holds more value than you. That don't work for me. That does not work for me. If your dog is just fixated on another dog across the street, your dog's telling you, that's more valuable than you. So how do you fix that, Vanessa? 
I would only hand feed my dog out on walks. They would never get a bowl of food in the morning and at night. They would only eat their meals out on a walk. That's the only opportunity they have to eat that day. And it's out of my hand. I bet you become a lot more interesting out on that walk. Unless your dog's overfed, you're going to become a lot more interesting on that walk. How do you train a down on recall, especially when training alone? Thanks for all you do. How do you train a down on recall? Georgie boy, I don't really get that. I don't really get that. You train a recall, you train a down. When the dog comes to you, you tell him down. I'm not sure what you mean. Hey, I made it. What's up, Alexa? Hello from Denmark. What up, Denmark? So I don't have to use a kind of puppy for my six-month-old? I thought there were nutrients, the puppy formula. Yeah, if you have a puppy, go the puppy formula. I thought you meant like fish, beef, chicken. General checkup. I like to check the dog's blood work annually. Okay, well, go get your blood work, see what's up. No, no nothing really specific for that visit. There was a terrific video about starting the healing process. Loved it. Thank you. Oh, that was... Thank you. That's exactly how you got to do it. There's a lot I know now that I didn't know when I first got my puppy. Definitely feeling now I know vibe. So many thanks for educating us, Andy. Yeah, you know, even the best dog trainers in the world, if they're honest with themselves, they're going to feel that too. I, I still have a lot more that I want to learn. I, I still want to get a lot better. I, I in my opinion, Trust me, as much as I seem like I'm a <laughs> like I'm a know-it-all, I, I like to be a white belt, so everyone's always constantly learning. That's my attitude. My neighbor just got a mountain one. She already wants to get rid of it because her whole family works all day. The dog is causing chaos. Yeah, people like that are not only irresponsible, but they're dangerous. They're irresponsible, they're dangerous. And I'm sorry, this is going to sound mean, but it disgusts me. Well, I'm going to get a dog. Oh, this dog, eh. it's disgusting, and, and I can't stand it. It boils my blood. I hate that, and I hate your neighbor. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Seriously, though, like, someone needs to yell at those people. Like, these, these grown adults that are buying these dogs, and then, oh, I'm going to get rid of this dog. Someone needs to, like, Put them in their place and yell at them. Like, what are you doing? Like, you, you get out of here with that. Like, that stuff makes me nuts. Excellent advice. We'll do it. Thank you. Hey, Andy, one available she bites plus the baseball caps. I know, I know, the, like the artist that does the shirts, she takes like a year to do a design. I even pay her extra and she still doesn't. It's the slowest ever. It's terrible. Oh my God, you're sitting down. Advice is great. Having this issue in training, sitting down back to back, won't do that anymore. Yeah, guys, if your dog is laying down from a sit, uh, that's when you never do a down from a sit again. Sit is sit. Down is down, but they never intermingle. Like, come on, do your research. But even, even doing research, no, it's nothing. You can research a Malinois all day long. You'll never be qualified to own one. I get it what you mean, do your research. I get it, and you're right. But still, I've had people come to me and they go, yeah, so... Uh, Bro, I researched this breed for two years straight before I bought one, and they decimated the dog. It was the biggest S show I've ever seen. So do the research? No, no, still not good enough. I know. That's what makes dogs tough. Working dogs for working dog home only. Working dogs needs to be worked. Yeah, you nailed it, Tango. You can't just buy a German Shepherd and then be like, I have a working dog. Hey, man, what's his job? The dog actually has to have a job. A lab's a working dog. 99% of labs that live in a house 
have zero job. So you can't go, yeah, I got a working dog, man. Yeah, I got a working dog. What's his job? What's the story about males being sensitive to anesthesia? That's true. I hate putting a Malinois under. I will not put a Malinois under anesthesia unless their life depends on it because they are sensitive to it and they can't easily die from it. I'm a little nervous about neutering her and the risk factor. Hell yeah, you should be nervous. There's a huge risk factor with anesthesia. It's my least fit. I almost never, ever do that. Very dangerous for a Malinois. I don't know why. It's just genetics. Again, back to like nature and just outside of our modern society, like it's just chemicals that aren't supposed to ever be in the dog's body. You know, it's just, of course, that's going to be risky. I have two Malinois that are siblings. One of them has longer hair. Why is that? They can be totally different, you know, totally. I don't know. They said, oh, since it was a female, it needs less exercise. Yeah, your neighbor's a moron, and someone needs to yell at your neighbor, and your neighbor should never own a dog again. Booyah! Guys, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Hope you guys have a good weekend or week whenever you watch this. If you're still here listening, I appreciate you. Drop me a comment, patreon.com slash Andy Kruger. How dare you not buy the merch? It's my birthday today. Happy birthday, Tangos Malinois. I hope you have a good one. I hope you have a good one. Happy birthday. All right, y'all. Happy training. See you next week.